Hey everybody, welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, another comedian and cinephile, it's Steve Hernandez. Hey, thanks for having me, Jay. Happy to have you, Steve. I uh, I am a big fan of uh, your of your tweets and your jokes and your movie talk. Um, I'm surprised you don't use Letterboxd more. I just looked up your your account. You don't really. You know what's so funny is uh, I know I saw I saw on your Instagram you're like oh I just posted these things on Letterboxd. Zed, my co-host for my movie podcast, reviews from the Vista. He is obsessed with it. He's always uh, filling it in. You know everyone's connected. Everyone loves Zed. I he's been trying to get me to use it for years. I uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling this story because it has such a sad ending. I wrote two reviews and I like had a goal and I was like. All right, this could be kind of fun. And then my aunt uh, died of COVID. <laughs> oh no! Yes, it's so funny. I was just, <laughs> I was just getting into it. Zed had been trying to get me to use Letterbox for years, and I'm like, you know what? This is because I had always used it on my phone. I didn't like the app, but then I used it on my computer, and I was like, oh, this is cool. It was it's a lot easier to use, and I was like, oh, there's very smart, funny, sharp people. Uh, on Letterbox, that even you know on Twitter they're my friends and stuff, but you just have a little more access to them. It's just a different social media platform in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, yes. And then my aunt died, and I just haven't got back on the horse. <laughs> yeah, that'll real put a real put a hitch in your creative giddy up. Somebody dying of COVID in your family. Um, <laughs> well, at any rate, we're here now, and we're here to talk about a movie that uh, I had never seen until you brought it up, and I just finished watching it about half an hour ago and it is the uh, uh is 1995's get shorty now what'd you think <sighs> it's it's so i don't know man i love danny devito in it i think he was great i i mostly like gene hackman and i think there's some, there are definitely some parts that i laughed at um but it felt very middle of the road Oh no! I think this is a perfect movie. I saw you yesterday. We saw each other at uh, at the at the Americana. You were paying for parking. We were leaving, and I I just think even when I was watching it yesterday. Now, granted, uh, I saw this at a movie at a at a point where like, what's your favorite movie? There will be blood. Okay, I saw. How old were you when you saw There Will Be Blood? I was seventeen. Okay, Th- that's exactly how old I was when I saw this movie. And this Uh, movie is um, Pulp Fiction is my favorite movie. Okay, I I saw I'm older than you. So I saw Pulp Fiction in the theater on like a whim. I used to go to the movies like all the time growing up in West Covina. There there was three movie theaters, the Eastland, the West Coast, the Fox. There was something called the shuttle where you could pay a quarter and it would take you to like all around the city. So I would go to the movies by myself all the time. Okay, And uh, for some reason, I read a Vanity Fair article. You know, and I w- I'm telling you, I was in fucking high school. I thought it, Vanity Fair was a woman's magazine, but I was just bored or something. I, it, it was my aunt's, and I read something about this guy, Quentin Tarantino, and about this movie, and the article was so well written. I went to see this movie, Pulp Fiction, and I was, l- like, blown away. I had never seen anything like this movie before. Uh, the way he, you know, they went backwards and forwards mm-hmm. and played with that. I mean, I was, like, just moved. I saw it seven times in the theater. Uh, I was just that kind of thing. And then this was the direct follow-up to to, um, Pulp Fiction, which I I, I just do think that Get Shorty is a pretty flawless movie featuring almost... I mean, it's based on a novel by Elmore Leonard. Get the fuck out of here. One of the best writers in the game. Every actor in this movie, they're all legends, including Danny DeVito, Gene Hackman, Rene Russo, Delroy Lindo... Uh, Dennis Del Fer- Lindo is very good. Is awesome. He's awesome He's in it. In this movie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's just such a cool laid back in the cut. You're right. It is a smaller movie, but there are so many amazing scenes in this movie. And at its heart, you know, I just think it's so cool to have a Shylock mobster that just loves movies and to see the world of like gangsterism and organized crime meet Hollywood and that they're kind of the same in a lot of ways. Uh-huh. There, there's so many funny, brilliant, 
um, scenes in this movie. Uh, I love it, but I'm not watching it. You know, I'm not watching it 27 years later uh, with someone who has all, you know, you've seen 27 years worth of movies now. Too. Yeah. So it's hard to say these kind of things when you're like, oh, this had such a huge impact on me. It's like when you hear about music or comedians or like, uh, who's the fucking guy who who's in the, who's the comedian who was in the nightclubs and saying the N word and, uh, with the strippers, you know who he is. Oh God. Uh, it's the guy, one of the top three comedians of all time. The guy who changed everything. <laughs> uh, like a rich Lenny, Bre- Lenny Bruce, Lenny Bruce. Yes. Like when you hear Lenny Bruce now, like he's not funny. Right. But you do understand that this, uh, although, you know what? I'm not going to give it to you, Jay. Because, <laughs> because that, because this movie, I, I just still think is pretty incredible, but you still just think it's middle of the road. huh? I think it's, middle, here's the thing. I, um, I see the point you're making and I have, I have some, some parts that I do agree with you on. I, uh, it, it, this actually kind of makes a nice pairing with I just watched for the very first time this weekend. I watched Caddyshack and Caddyshack is another one of those like classic comedies that everybody when I told them I hadn't seen it, they're like, how have you never seen this movie? Oh, my God. And I watched it and I was I was like, OK, yeah, I get it. But I wasn't impressed. And that's kind of how I felt with Get Shorty. Like there's some scenes in this like. Uh, like the, the, the Delroy Lindo, John Travolta, the first time that they are just one-on-one in a scene together in, uh, in Howard Zinn's office. Great. I love that. I love that scene. The, yes. the performances yeah, there scene. are really solid. The dialogue's really cracking and everything is, everything's good. Anytime Danny DeVito was on screen, I loved his performance. I loved the way he played that, like that stuck up movie star actor type, um, but it just felt like if this movie set a bar, the bar has been cleared. By what? What would you say is better <laughs> than this this kind of movie? Than this kind of movie? Yeah. I mean, I mean I, what, what would you even compare it to? It's hard to it's it's hard to compare it to a movie. And I will say, I think part of my opinion is skewed on this right now because I just finished watching The Sopranos for the first time, and I think that has uh, colored the way I look at mob media. And I think that the Sopranos had so many funny elements just solely based in the world of the mafia that, you know, I get the, um, the appeal of seeing uh, a mobster out of his element and doing something, you know, trying to pursue his passion of making movies and getting out of the business. You know, it's a fun comedic premise, but I think that there is, more comedy that can be wrung out of a situation uh, like what you see in The Sopranos and in pretty much every single episode. And Wag the Dog, I think, does the somebody who's an outsider in Hollywood coming to jump in and really getting the full picture better than Get Shorty does. You know, I haven't, and, and that to my cre- to my discredit, I haven't seen Wag the Dog, uh, and I haven't seen Caddyshack either. But uh, I just don't think this is that kind of a comedy at all. Um, but that you seeing The Sopranos and that coloring the way you see this is very interesting to me. That's a very interesting thing. But I, I don't think this movie is so on the nose with the gangsterism. Like John Travolta isn't the comedic he's not supposed to be that funny in this. Like they don't really ring a lot out of that. It's all these it's characters true. around him. So like Gene Hackman, you know, is is amazing. You brought up that uh, scene with uh, Delroy Lindo and Travolta. I I mean, the I love the first scene where you find out you figure out so much about the Gene Hackman character. The first time they're going to meet uh, Delroy Lindo and the other henchman who was just mm-hmm. on White Lotus. What's that guy's name? David Payman yes. or no, uh, John, John Grice, uh, who's also awesome. They walk in. Chili Palmer tells him, don't say anything. Don't definitely don't bring up that other script. Don't do all these things. And then you just watch Gene Heckman knock all those pins down that character. Mm-hmm. I thought that was so funny. That's so brilliant. Um, the the Danny DeVito, John Travolta scene is I was I was exercising and I was watching it. Me and Julia were watching it. And I just think that acting scene part is like one of the funniest scenes ever <laughs> in any anything when. When Danny DeVito like looks down and he looks up and he's like, what are you telling me? You tell me you're sleepy right now. What's going on with you? (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, that whole scene is is so funny. But you know, I'm not that kind of guy. You know, I just the movies are fun. I don't want to talk you into anything. I want to ask you. So this is uh, the thing that I'm so. I guess confused by so John Travolta is playing the straight man the whole movie right he's the straight man against all these other wacky characters something about and for me something about his performance didn't work and I don't know what I'm not getting like he got the Golden Globe for best actor for this he uh, oh really I didn't know that that's great he he got Golden Globe for best actor in a in a musical or comedy he who else did he beat out that year this is uh, uh him up against you know uh, Michael Douglas, Harrison Ford, Steve Martin, and Father of the Bride Part Two, Patrick Swayze, and Tu Wong Fu. So he's got, for some reason, he's got this hold over the movie. By and I'm probably just because he's the main guy, but I don't understand why. Like, why him? Why John Travolta? Why do you feel like? Well, his performance just didn't stick out to me. Is like, and it's not even the performance. I think it's just. It just like I wasn't I didn't really give a shit about him as a character. Oh, I just thought, I mean, you know, I, I hate to side with the Golden Globes. <laughs> 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 I know you're like, he, I'm like, oh, he beat out Steve Martin for Father of the Bride, too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, but That's all order. I do think just um, to the ability to play a sweet mobster that also was like an effective mobster. You know, you see at the beginning of the movie that he uh, breaks Dennis Farina's nose. He shoots Dennis Farina in the face. He's good at his job. And at one point in the movie, he even says, ah, you know, I'm very good at this job, but I just don't like it that much. Uh-huh. And and to see that he's very sweet, effective, uh, but that he ultimately just loves the movies. Uh, and then all the different rules that he has for himself and that he tells them throughout uh, the the movie. I mean, I just think that that's great to play a, a mobster like, you know, James Gandolfini does that, uh, does it in a way where he's not any kind of anti hero or anything. I mean, he's just a beast. Basically, he's an right. animal. Mm-hmm. And that is a, is that the fact that he operates as an animal, I think, is why he's so uh, amazing in that role. And ultimately, people like him because, you know, he is what he is. Right. Uh, Travolta is like on, on the other end is just a, a gentleman mobster who, you know, he's probably hurt someone, but he doesn't really talk about it that much. I, I don't I think he's I, Travolta is a an ama- as I was watching this, I was like, we're going to go back and we're going to like I think people are going to start talking about Travolta as like one of the greats. Have you seen Blown Out? No. Watch Blown Out. Uh, we just read a story we were talking about. I think Quentin Tarantino was said it on a on a recent like maybe on Rogan or something, but he said, yeah, uh, Harvey Weinstein did not want him to to book uh, Travolta for Pulp Fiction. He said, pick anybody you want, give me a huge list, and we'll take it to the the producers and see what they say. And he did, and he's like, every name on this is okay except for Travolta. And T- uh, QT just said, go watch Blown Out and then t- t- uh, tell me about that. So I-, I will tell you to watch Blown Out. It's a very fun. Very great, great uh, Brian De Palma noir movie. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, it's I mean it's snappy, it's everything. You got to watch it. But uh, I, 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 I've never heard this, Jay. I mean, I just don't even know. <laughs> the opinion is so backwards uh, to me. It, it, it's just like uh, I don't know, like the most beautiful woman, and you're like, eh, not for me. To me, <laughs> I'm like, who, who am I going? Like, I don't even know why I would try to talk you into that. I'm not uh-huh. going to name all the things. Listen, when the Hollywood foreign press says. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I recognize that I'm I'm probably in the minority here. And, in, in, you know, as far as like from a critical standpoint, even an audience score standpoint, you know, this has an 88 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I fucking told you, Jay. <laughs> this has a 70 percent audience score. And here's the cra- and this is what I was was considering yesterday because when we talked about uh you were like oh this I'm, I'm so excited for you to watch the movie this is one of the best movies of all time and i was like i don't know if steve actually hates this movie <laughs> which worked out because i i don't hate the movie but i'm underwhelmed yes and i, I and now you get to and now you're defending this movie that i like i feel like i just don't i don't get it i don't i feel like i mean to, let's talk from the writing standpoint 
the dialogue is really good. I think, yes. you know, when you're pulling from, uh, and when you're adapting a movie from a great writer like Elmore Leonard, you, you're, you're getting something handed to you on a silver platter. I think the pacing, uh, the, the, of the editing and the way that that is, uh, that kind of undercuts the snappiness that the dialogue could have. Like, I think I almost wanted it to be just a hair quicker in all the scenes. Like, I feel like you had, there's, there's too much breathing room between the lines for it to feel as chaotic and fun as this movie could have been. Well, you know, me and the rest of the fucking world disagree with you, Jay. Eighty-eight percent Rotten Tomato. Yeah, I just these things that you're bringing up, I just don't even know what to tell you, buddy. Uh, I I do agree with you. The dialogue's perfect. Um, they kept trying to like change the dialogue during this movie. Uh, like for instance, Travolta brought this up in some interview where at the beginning he says when Dennis Farina's character takes his jacket, he he says you. Give me that jacket, or you owe me three seventy. You owe me three hundred seventy nine dollars that my wife, ex wife, paid for it at Alexander's. Mm -hmm. In the script, they tried to change it to four hundred dollars, and Travolta was like, "Why would you change it to four hundred dollars? Just keep it at three seventy nine. What a great number just to say three seventy nine. It's funnier is the specific. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just funnier that way. And I also think, as I was watching again, and I've seen this movie so many times, but not in years. I uh, I also thought that was I was like, oh, he, I guess he's like pretty nice as a, a mobster also, because the fact that he would even say just, you know, give me the money either for it, I think is a pretty nice thing for a mobster to say. Dan Dennis Farina's character certainly wouldn't say that. But I mean, this this movie's dialogue, I, I think it's as snappy as it could be. I don't know what to fucking tell you. <laughs> I, I mean, this is so funny to me where it's just so so diametrically opposed <laughs> to what you're saying. <laughs> it's just, it's just what I, I think. And that's what, I, and that's it is what it about, is. That's the thing about movies and about art and all of this stuff is it's so subjective. And maybe you had high expectations going into it. I know that that's a huge deal. Sometimes with going, going to the movies is how you feel going into it. I don't know what your morning was like or what, how late you stayed up, but all of this stuff really does play a role in how one feels about movies oftentimes. Yeah, that's very true. I, uh, I think, you know, in the same vein as Caddyshack, right, where I watched it and I was like, okay, this is... I get why people love this movie. Do you know I would never, I, I, would, I, would never I would never even watch Caddyshack. I haven't seen it, but I know there's a fucking gopher in it. Like yeah. that kind of shit. I'm like, yeah, I, and I know who's in it. Chevy Chase and uh, uh, Ted Knight. And I'm just like, there's nothing that, that to me is such an uh, a waspy, like white, like movie that there's no way I'm going to watch this now. Maybe when I was little, if my dad brought me up with it and maybe mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would say that for this movie, but as you keep pointing out, it's universally loved except by Jay Light. <laughs> I uh, I am curious. So you haven't watched this movie in a long time. This is your first yes. time watching it in, in a number years. of years. Yeah. Is this one of those movies that, you know, even as you continue to watch it, do you feel like you're not you're not clouded by nostalgia like is the, you you've I'm watched always, a ton of movies since then i'm all i'm al always open to that now and uh my wife julia loken uh she loves it as much uh i i'm um well you know but it, it's just like i said yeah i i love this movie at a very pivotal time um where i i thought travolta could do no wrong i think he quickly followed this movie up with michael and so <laughs> so I know he can do wrong. Uh, and then I think he, he did also. And I might be getting all this uh, or I, all the orders like mixed up for this. But he did that movie phenomenon, too, where he has like magic powers. But Man, you're so much more of a Travolta head than I would have. I've, uh, I've never even heard of some of these movies that you're dropping. I'm just older than you. How old are you, Jay? I'm 31. Yeah, I'm 43. So I've just been going yeah, to the movies. More Travolta, yeah. I, I've been going to the movies by myself. Like even when I was in middle school, I would just go to the movies by myself. So I've just seen so many more movies in the mm -hmm. theater and that kind of a thing. But yeah, I, I've you know I I haven't liked Travolta, but I find myself when I was watching this, and he is making such kind of crazy choices, too crazy in the vein of like Nick Cage. Although Nick Cage, I I, I think, did you see Pig? 
No, I've got to see Pig still. I hear it's phenomenal. Pig's really good, man. And I think Cage is like going to people are going to talk about Cage like one of America's greatest actors. I don't know if they're going to say that for Travolta because uh, because of Scientology. Truly, I think that just like messes things up so bad mm. for people will be. It's just like it's almost like Tom Cruise. They're just like uh, America just hates that the, their weirdo aspects so much. And yeah. Tom Cruise also a phenomenal movie star and actor. But uh, both of them, I don't know if they're going to get their just due, probably until they die. Yeah, I I could see that happening for uh, for Tom Cruise and John Travolta. Well, especially for Nick Cage too, because I feel like Nick Cage, especially in this in this new era of his career, where he is putting out movies that and per, he's allowed to perform these characters in a way that is really unlike anything that other actors of of the current era would be putting out like Mandy. I thought he was fantastic in Mandy, you know, even in a, in a movie where like um, I did, I did an episode about a Nick cage movie that the only good part of it was Nick cage. It was, uh, Oh God, I'm going to look this up. Cause uh, he's just so compelling to watch. I, I feel, I feel a lot of this, you know, this about Danny DeVito too. I think anytime Danny DeVito in get shorty was on screen, I loved it. And anytime I see Danny DeVito show up in another movie or a television show, he's just magnetic. And I, I think, I don't know. I feel, I you don't feel that feel way, about, that way about John Travolta. I feel like if maybe if this movie had a different lead, then, then I would like it more. I just feel like Travolta didn't, like I, 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 I. What do you like Travolta in? I let me. I'm gonna look up the list of Travolta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah. I if you don't an like, here. if you don't like Travolta that much, and it feels like he did something to you or your family. <laughs> I mean, it just feels that way. <laughs> if you don't like Travolta that much, then yeah, you're not gonna like this movie that much. I think you don't it's get the charm of this movie. It's if not even that I charming. You're not gonna get the charm of the movie. I haven't seen and uh, I haven't seen a lot of movies that Travolta has been in. The last movie I saw that Travolta was in uh, were they were in 2007. So it was Hairspray and Wild Hogs. And I can guarantee <laughs> I saw Wild Hogs after I saw Hairspray. <laughs> and I walked out of Wild Hogs. That was the only movie I had ever walked out of. Well, here's the real problem, Jay. You walked into Wild Hogs. <laughs> I Listen, don't know what the fuck you were thinking, but my uh, th- I saw that I was in high school. My girlfriend and I we went to go see it because there were her parents were fighting. We were like, we got to get out of the house. <laughs> okay, I like this. I like and this Wild Hog story. Yeah. This movie was so bad. We w- we left to go back to where her parents were on the. Brink we went of back to the arguments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're not a Travolta fan, so. This podcast isn't about Get Shorty. This podcast is about what can we show Jay Light to convince him that John Travolta is a great actor. I'm re- I'm I'm ready for that challenge. I feel like you know there's a lot of Travolta classics that I still haven't seen. You know, if uh, of the ones that people talk about the most, Pulp Fiction I've seen for sure. Yeah, but I haven't seen Face Off. I haven't seen Grease or Saturday Night Fever. Uh, well, I mean, I, stop I know. It. Just stop. <laughs> Stop the podcast. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I mean, you're I mean, you're not uh, depending on how you feel about musicals, but I, I assume you're not going to be that big of a Grease fan. But Saturday Night Fever is an amazing film that not only I mean, you know, we think about it because of the the soundtrack and, and uh, but it, it, this is a movie that just rocked America's zeitgeist. It's such a dark movie. Mm-hmm. Okay? I, if, if you love film and, and I think you do. Uh, there's no way you are not going to be like Saturday Night Fever is electrified. Like I've you'd heard, be, you'd be things. surprised how dark and like, wow, this this movie. Like you know, I think Kumail Nanjiani. Uh, there's like a, a you know, there's a rape scene in it. There's like all this crazy <sighs> shit. Yeah, and K- Kumail Nanjiani used to have a joke about that. He's like, this dancing movie. This is the movie that where they got the rape scene. <laughs> crazy on it there's suicide i mean this is a like dark movie See, i wouldn't have guessed that based on a movie with a big old Bee Gees soundtrack yeah exactly uh it's 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 a it's about poor people it's fucking yeah watch saturday night fever watch uh blowout um but but yeah i mean as a movie fan you just have to watch saturday night fever like tonight I, i'm surprised you haven't seen it I like the poster for Blowout. I've never, I've never heard of it until you brought it up. Do you like Brian, De, cool. Brian De Palma films? I haven't seen a ton of them. I, lo- I, uh, I really liked um, Scarface. I, I 
and I um I got to rewatch Mission Impossible again. It's been a while since I've seen it. I was I was really young when I saw that, but I I thought Scarface was great. Yeah, uh, watch uh, watch uh, watch Blowout, um, and also watch the the De- Palma documentary. I think that might fucking get you fired up because it's just it's made by uh, it's made by someone funny. Who's the guy who did Rushmore? Oh, Wes Anderson. Yeah, I believe it was Wes Anderson. Or who's the guy who did Squid and the Whale? Uh, Noah Baumbach. It's one of those two. Okay. They did this documentary on him where they're just interviewing him and they just go through his discography. And he's funny because he's just kind of a blowhard. His movies are very violent and he's like very violent towards women in a lot of ways. But mm-hmm. not I mean, the whole thing, he's defending it, too. And you you kind of kind of just I mean, I like him a lot. And the documentary is very good. And that'll get you, I think. As watching him, you'll be like, oh, this guy seems pretty fucking cool. And you want to see his movies. He's a great American director. I got to want because I've only seen uh, Scarface and Mission Impossible and The Untouchables. I thought Scarface was great. I thought The Untouchables was fine. And and Mission Impossible, like you can't knock Mission Impossible. I just don't remember it well enough to be like, oh, my God, it blew my mind. I was, you know, I saw the first one in the theater and I was, I remember being bored of it. So I don't like that as a Brian De Palma film. I, I dress to kill blowout. Uh, he's, he's got like much better movies that I think, uh, I think if you put them on, you'd find them like highly entertaining uh, and they're great noir movies. A lot of, <laughs> he called, they were transvestites at the time. He has like a few movies where transvestites play huge roles in the movie. A lot of weird switchy sex, like crazy, a lot of boobs. It's, you know, it's great. Uh, well, I mean, I got to watch that then. That's, but but it, yeah, all, if all this to- sounds a lot more fun. I feel like I got to go back, but that's the thing. Should I, as a, as a film goer have to watch five or six other movies and then go back to get shorty and be able to appreciate get shorty. Cause I feel like no. that's a tall order. Yeah, no, of course not. That's not, you know, movies are, aren't supposed to be homework. But um, I do understand more where you're coming from as someone who did not grow up with this person or find this person the least bit charming. So, uh, yeah, to to just take this thing, you know, the person didn't hit you the right way and he's the star of the movie. And if you're not uh, charmed by this person, you will not be charmed by this movie. But the fact that you haven't seen Saturday Night Fever or blowout or some like are you in like not a Travolta fan at all? It makes sense to me why this is just like ah eh, to you. But but I mean you do to bring up a good point. If that guy's not, you know, carrying the movie just within the movie, then you know, it's not your responsibility to <laughs> have to go watch all his discography, <laughs> his filmography. Give me a break. Um I have one other question for you. And I uh I I bring this up because this is one of my big pet peeves with movies that I've seen lately in general for this show. Um, And it's kind of the inverse of that. I've been watching a lot of movies for the show lately where the ending is just too tidy. Like it gets, it gets, you know, we, we get a bow on it in the last five minutes and we can get out and roll credits In get shorty. The ending is, it's very quick. You know, all of the pieces of of the, uh, you know, like the money. I mean, we, we haven't talked about it. There's like three together. or four intricate plots that we're juggling throughout this whole movie. Right. But the movie does flawlessly go on. <laughs> so by the very end, we yeah. have this this sequence where uh, where Dennis Freeman's character goes to the lockers at LAX. He opens the locker and then. All of a sudden, we're on a movie set, and Danny DeVito is uh, unable to fire a gun. And then you see Dennis Farina walking off as if he was the character in this scene. And it felt, you know, then it, we're starting to get to this. It, we do this pullout shot where they're like Rene Russo and John Travolta getting in the car. And it just felt like a weird place to end the movie. What do you what do you feel about the ending to this movie? Does it does it hold up as much as the rest of the plot is very intricate? It feels like I was wanting just something a little bit tidier. It feels too chaotic of a place to end the movie. No, no, Jay. I think it's a fucking perfect ending. <laughs> we know that the Dennis Farina character gets arrested. That's right. the last kind of plot that ties up the last plot of things that are going on. Delroy Lindo's dead. 
Danny DeVito obviously signed on to do this movie. Nobody really wanted to do Mr. Lovejoy. He was always chasing after this new Shylock movie that Chili Palmer was doing. Right. So right. obviously he's directing that now. So that's why he's producing it. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Rene Russo's in the movie. Chili Palmer's going to fit in perfectly to Hollywood. Ah, what a what a great tidy ending. Thank you, Barry Sonnenfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this. Thank you for the Adams Family. Thank you for the Men in Black trilogy. What a director, Barry Sonnenfeld. Thank you, sir. Maybe I've, I haven't seen enough Barry Sonnenfeld either. I have no. I I, th- I think he's a great like mainstream. He pumps out like great, funny, sharp mainstream hits. Uh, Adams. He did the Adams Family movies and the Men in Black movies. That's exactly what you expect from Barry Sonnenfeld. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah. But I mean, obviously, you, you didn't like it. It's not that I didn't I didn't like it, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. I just feel kind of <laughs> indifferent on it. I'm just like, that's yeah, it was a movie. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We've already figured out why you felt that way. But yeah, like I said, I love this movie. I, I think it's pretty flawless. That's what's so funny to you. When I told you I saw you yesterday in the parking garage, and I said perfect movie. I think it might be like a perfect movie. It might like it might I might put this in my top ten. Wow. Which I would, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, that uh, Pulp Fiction, I think, is a perfect movie. Rushmore, I think, is a pretty perfect movie. Um, Before Sunset. These are like some of my top 10 movies. We have a very different uh, uh, idea of what a perfect movie is. What do you think a perfect movie is? I mean, my top movies, There Will Be Blood, I think is perfect. I think Fantastic Mr. Fox is a perfect movie. I think I haven't, you know, I haven't seen Fantastic uh, Mr. Fox. Uh, I do love Spring Breakers. Um, I wouldn't call Spring Breakers perfect, though, because Spring Breakers to me is more of a vibe. There's like shots I could do without or whatever. But I think the vibe of it is awesome. I think what what I what perfect feels like for me is a movie that can pull off a vibe more. I do like, you know, Uncut Gems, Moonrise Kingdom, Dunkirk or some of the other movies in my top in my in my top 10. And those movies for me, what makes them really work is they come together to bring me to a really strong emotional place. Um, and Get Shorty, I can see why you really like this movie. From a filmmaking standpoint, it's it's about as airtight as it can get, right? The script and the ki- and the characters and the and the way it all comes together, but it didn't take me to an extra to an extra level the way that some of these other movies that I really like have. Yeah. I mean, yeah what it is. That, yeah. 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 That kind of a thing. You can't really, they are all these movies. I like, I like Dunkirk and I know people really, really like Dunkirk, but I, I was not as moved by that. I know it's beautiful, but mm-hmm. I just wasn't as moved by it too. You can't that final thing. And it's the thing we chase when we go to the movies too. So it's not you, what you're asking for. Isn't, if a thing doesn't get you over that hump, that's not on who knows whatever the thing, who knows whatever life you've lived so that Dunkirk affected you more. Right. And vice versa for me with Get Shorty. Exactly. Yeah. Me not liking this movie is clearly not anybody's fault but my own. I mean, look at the, <laughs> look at the accolades. Look at the look, Hollywood Foreign Press Association knows. <laughs> I wish it could have been the Oscars. The Golden Globes <laughs> are such pieces of shit. <laughs> oh, man. I am surprised that this didn't get nominated for any Oscars. Uh, I just think, I think the reason why I didn't get nominated for any Oscars is the reasons why I think it's, they don't really do these kind of movies. I don't think they're, it, it doesn't carry the emotional heft that the Oscars likes. Typically, it is what it is. Yeah, and comedies always do get relegated at the Oscars, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, well, thank you for watching this. I do appreciate it. I'm happy. I am happy. I watched it. This is far from the worst movie I've seen for the show. This is this is a this was a delightful way to spend a morning. I just wish that there was more something to it but you get the something out of it that i don't and that is uh and 88 percent of people in the world also get <laughs> that's something that i don't so i'm fine to be uh in the dark here and in the wrong uh because i will stand by my this needs more to it all i ask of you is uh is that in the next month that you watch saturday night fever you really do need to watch that jay done i will i will do that for you steve and i will thank you, you know how thank you thank you um, where can the listeners find you and your work? You got a couple podcasts. 
Yeah, look uh, look me up on uh, Big Hern on Twitter and Hernia on Instagram. I have a brand new uh, podcast YouTube show called Read the Bible with Me with Steve Hernandez that I'm very excited about. Um, but uh, yeah, just look me up on the socials and you'll find all the shit there. Cool. Um, go check out Steve's stuff. Um, and especially if you like this podcast, you should definitely check out Views from the Vista where you get to hear some some more wonderful movie talk. Uh, and you, if you like my stuff, please follow me at DietJ on Twitter and Instagram, uh, jlightcomedy.com for show dates. And that's about it. Steve, Great. thanks again. Thanks so much, Jay. This has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. <laughs>